appeared to be going Falkenhayn's way. French military leaders declared Verdun could not be held if the east bank of the Meuse was lost and that French national morale would not survive the loss of the city. At this point, however, Crown Prince Wilhelm and his staff stopped following Falkenhayn's strategic concept and committed the 5th Army to greater offensive action. The seizure of ground became the priority and by the end of February, German losses at Verdun were similar to the French casualties. General Philippe Pétain was then given command of the French 2nd Army at Verdun. Pétain had a reputation as a master of defence and organised his forces to defend in depth by establishing a series of mutually supporting strongpoints, rather than pushing all his troops into the vulnerable frontline trenches. Pétain also rotated units through Verdun on a regular basis and whilst this exposed much of the French army to the battle, it ensured troops did not spend long periods of time at the front. The French also greatly increased the number of artillery pieces at Verdun, leading to the Germans suffering equally from incessant shelling. The ability of the French to sustain the battle was due to ammunition and supplies arriving along the Bois Sacre. The already terrible battlefield conditions were made worse throughout March and April, as persistent rain turned the area into a quagmire. In late April, General Robert Nivelle took over French command from Pétain and began large-scale counter-attacks. This offered the Germans a chance to return to Falkenhayn's strategy, but by this time all sense of the original concept was lost, replaced by a fixation to take Verdun. In early June the Germans took Fort Vaux after very tough fighting. This proved to be their final success. Efforts to continue the advance later that month failed, despite the use of phosgene gas. On the 24th of June, the Allied bombardment began on the Somme. The German offensive at Verdun was reduced.